Welcome to episode 135 of the Sports Geek Podcast. On this week's episode, I chat Nitro Athletics and Usain Bolt with Olympian John Stephenson. Welcome to the Sports Geek Podcast, the podcast built for sports digital and sports business professionals. And now, here's your host, who's checking the podcast download stats right now, Sean Callanan. Thanks, DJ Joel. Very happy with the podcast download stats. Had a nice big bump to kick off 2017, just passing 175,000 downloads. So if you're one of the people, which you are because you're listening to this, who have downloaded the podcast, a big thank you. A bit of a recap from last year's, the three top episodes from 2016, uh, that my chat with Nick Trulson covering the Western Bulldogs championship run or premiership success, as we would say in Australia. Also, my chat with uh, Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment's Joe Gottfried, uh, talking about uh, the commercialization of social and digital. Uh, it was another great chat if you haven't listened to it. And also, my good friend from Blitzmetrics, Dennis Yu, episode 114, uh, talking about uh, the secrets source of, uh, of Facebook ads. That was the top three from, uh, from 2016. And yeah, pleasantly surprised the Sports Geek replay that ran over the Christmas New Year period. Uh, Helped, helped the numbers uh, in January and also helped uh, us jump into the top 150 podcasts in Australia, which is, has been its highest ranking uh, since, since it started. So again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sean Callanan and this is the Sports Geek Podcast. You might be listening to it on iTunes um, or you might be under my heavy recommendation listening to it on Pocket Cast app i'm a massive fan of pocket cast it's built it's built here in australia works in android and in uh ios and saves where, what ep- episodes you're listening to and what you've downloaded across multiple devices if you're a multi-device person um yeah i strongly suggest you check out uh, pocket casts this week's guest um is olympian uh john stephenson and one of the uh, brainchild and the guys behind nitro athletics to give you a little bit of background before I jump into the conversation with John, because it is, uh, he brings the energy. Um, he's an absolute colourful character and uh, was a terrific interview. Uh, but Nitro Athletics is Athletics Answer uh, to what is the shortening form of sport. Over here in Australia, we've had, we've had cricket, which has multiple forms of the game, the five-day test match, the one-day uh, cricket match, to then having 2020. We've had Anthony Evard on the show talking about the Big Bash League. And again, it's a short, sharp uh, version of the game that's built for TV, and it's really about uh, entertainment. And we've seen the shortening of a lot of different sports to sort of follow that model, whether it be uh, Rugby 7, Auckland 9s in in, uh, Rugby Union and Rugby League, respectively. Um, And so this is Nitro's uh, uh, shot at that title, um, to produce a team-based sport, that's points-based, that's built for TV, that will get people involved, that's really about the entertainment. Um, and the exciting thing is they've got, a, they've, got a, they've got an athlete named Usain Bolt involved and he will be coming down and he will have a team. So um, it's very exciting to have them down here uh, in Australia in, in February. Um, and so the first round will be uh, the 4th of Feb, 9th of Feb and the 11th of Feb. Um, and so with teams from around the world and, and some real up-and-coming athletes. So, But I'm not the best person to talk about it. The best person to talk about it is uh, my next guest, John Stephenson. Okay, here we are at Lakeside Stadium, Melbourne Park. I'm here with Olympian, Commonwealth Games medalist, worldwide of sports host, John Stephenson. Welcome to the Sports Geek Podcast. The one and only. How you doing, Sean, sure, man? Good to be on the on the station, on the podcast that that everybody wants to get on. And I'm on it finally, Sean. It's ter- it's terrific to have you here. And uh, very, a big shout out and uh, thanks to Dave Colbert for teeing this up. I want to talk to you about uh, Nitro Athletics. Tell us about it. The future is arriving February 4th, 9th and 11th, man. It's... It's been a crazy process. We're trying to change a sport that hasn't been changed in 100 years and, and to bring it up to speed of into, into the 2017 and that's, and that's make, a, make a short, compacted uh, format 
uh, which allows the viewer, both live and also on TV, feel engaged, feel entertained, and uh, but still enjoy uh, the the convention uh, of the normal track events. You know? Yeah. So most people, you know, follow athletics like you know you in Athens in the in the four hundred you know, getting a medal, and follow it every four years or every two years with the Commonwealth Games. So what what are you looking to do in you know, in Nitro? Uh, to to get those fans back that are only coming along every two years. The easiest the easiest way to, to explain it is is if if you know cricket and you see the big bash cricket or you know netball and you see fast five netball or rugby league with rugby nines in New Zealand. Yep. Or rugby sevens. Uh, or uh, I mean the list goes on. The format everyone's realizing that you the sport need that yeah there's niceties in the sport that we yep. all love that we all played, but it needs to be fast. It needs to be entertaining. Uh, it, it's it's that's what athletics I feel has lacked over years. It you know you wait every four years like you said or every two years for a world champ or every year for every two or one year for a world championship depending if it's a uh, a Commonwealth year um, and, and that's it after that you don't get your athletic fix except for a diamond league which I feel is is hasn't reached the potential it's meant to reach. Yep. Um, you see we get low participation uh, in, in viewer. We can't get on television um, for our own athletics in Australia, let alone our national championships. The sport we, was, is dying rapidly. It's yep. on its knees. So um, we have to get that market share of the other, of the other sports have and we have, so we have to make athletics entertaining. You know, we all loved our school carnivals when we were younger and this is very similar. There's teams, which is your factions, like when you're in school or your houses. Uh, you have points, 180, 70, 60, 40, 30, uh, like you had in school. Um, and, you know, you're, you're in your team, like I said again. And then you have, we have a power play, which is similar to watching the TV show Survivor or hitting a six in the Big Bash cricket, yeah. where ideally what would you want is two teams right at the end on the last night, um, 80 points separating them and only one team has a power play left and they have to go out and, and win their – well, they can come second their event, use a power play, and they win the whole tournament from second place. That option is there now. You know, it's not just about the individual teams actually matter. So uh, this, I think this sort of format uh, for entertainment is needed. And, yeah, so I've been lucky enough to chat with Anthony Everard from, from Cricket Australia and talking about how Big Bash did it. Because, again, there's this, this shortened form of all the sports. And, you know, 2020, for the, for the listeners who are in the, the United States who don't know what cricket is, but it's when it's, you know, 20 over game and it's built for TV, it's fun, and it's fast-paced. And, yeah, so many different sports have tried to find their 2020. And so Nitro is very much this to get that team-based, fun, quick, fast-paced, entertaining, and made for TV. Yeah, yeah de- well, that's a big factor is, is uh, we're working closely with Channel 7, and NEP is the production company, and that was a big thing. How do we make this uh, entertaining from and, and different from a normal Olympic track structure? Yep. Uh, so um, there, there's a lot of facets in there which allows us to do that, you know, the, how quick events turn around, what events are on in the night. So we've got 60, 150, um, the distance medley relays where instead of a relay being run male, 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 say four males in a relay, it's two females, two males. Okay. So again, it, that throws a massive curveball how you set up a team. Like how do, you, how, how, how do these teams set up their four by one when yep. you've got a male, female, male, female? You know, you might find Bolt racing against Geneva Tamo from a, uh, in, uh, or sorry, Bolt racing against uh, Morgan Mitchell in the four by one. You know, in the race where you never see that ever. Yep. So it it just allows us to have that that point of difference, which then makes the sh- the, the event engaging. It allows people to interact because you have an opinion now. Yep. You know, it's not just as subjective as what running can be sometimes where there's a winner and there's a loser and it's rap or someone runs nine seconds and most people that are listening to this will not know how nine what's nine seconds feels like to run that or even understand what nine seconds means, but they do know what winning is. Yep. And they do know they do know what points is and what it means to a team. We all have done that through our lives if we've gone to school. Yeah. So, you know, you try and relate to what people already know. And that's what makes people come back and watch. You watch Big Bash Cricket, for those who don't know, it's very similar to baseball. We all 
play in America for the American listeners. We've all played baseball in the backyard. We all played cricket in the backyard. We all know what I used to hit over the fence, which is a six in cricket yep. and, and is a home run in baseball. So when you have a faster format like Big Bash and someone hits a six, that's the quick, that's the, the most relatable format of what we play in our backyard. Yep. So track and field, this this nitro is very, very similar to that. So and that's what we've created. And so what's been the response? You did mention a really big name in athletics just then. What has been the response of actual athletes and looking at this new format? I, I think a lot of it, you know, when you're when you're making a change as big as this is is education. Yep. Educating people about what you're trying to do, educating people about what is about to happen. And that was a process. But as a whole, once they're educated, they are believers. So it's been very easy at the same time, but you have to make an effort to go out there to make a change in anything you do in life. Yep. And that's what our team has done. We've said, okay, there is a problem. Let's make a change. Let's do something different. And to have Sebastian Coe from the IWF not only endorse it, but to actually fly over and actually watch the event speaks volumes. You know, Completely. So, and I've had a lot of discussions off the record with a lot of heads of shoe companies, and, and they're very excited because they know it's, it benefits them too. Sport, it, look, running is a foundation of most sports. I mean, unless you play darts, but even there, they run. <laughs> even they run back and forth to the bar. So you, you know, so you need to. I shouldn't say that because I rate darts a lot, and I've actually commentated on a darts game, and it was one of the best times of my life. So you know, but at the same time, you know, running is there. People, people can do it. We need to make that accessible and relatable again. You yep. know, and and. Everyone goes for a park run. Everyone says, okay, I'm going to get fit for football. First thing to do is go to the park and to do some sprints or go for a long run. So it's there. It's yep. there. we just got to give them something. We've got to give them something tangible. They can say, let's go and watch the track. And do you think it's going to have uh, the, the tangible benefit that – one of the reasons Big Bash was was built was to reconnect kids with the sport, yeah, both boys and girls. Definitely. And because you've got, again, you've got men and women running, doing all the different events, do you think that's going to have that flow-on effect, you know, to the little lats? I've still got my Peters Pal Award that I won back in 1981 <laughs> doing <laughs> little lats. Have, yeah. um, do you think that's going to have that flow-on effect as kids see it on the telly and then go, I'm going to go out and start running? You know, when we started this, that, that – was always in the forefront of my mind is, you know, track and field. And I lived in America for 11 years out of Los Angeles. And um, and I had the benefit of training out of UCLA. And, you know, you'd see, you know, a variety of kids come down to, to Drake Stadium or Jackie Joyner. I think it's Jackie Joyner, Kersey Stadium or Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we'll check it. The internet yeah, will yeah, know. Yeah, the internet will know and be like, <laughs> this guy doesn't need never train there. <laughs> so um and, and um and, and you know, and I obviously live in Australia and, and involved heavily in sport in Australia. And kids from fourteen to eighteen wanna become something. You're going through adolescence, you wanna be something. Yep. And famous Gatorade commercial, I wanna be like Mike. Uh, was there and they did a great job in that because, yeah, we all wanted to be like Mike at one point in yep. the state. And you've also got those Bo Nos, the and Bo, Bo Jackson Bo videos. Bo Jackson, who, I mean, what a legend in the game. So, you know, the big problem is is for athletics, the dream that a kid has is Olympic Games and it's such a hard thing to achieve to become an Olympian. It's even harder to win an Olympic medal. Yep. You need a, the gap filler. Yep. It's in between there. And you need a carrot, you know. For, in America, a lot of the time is getting a college degree. You know, you, you do high school sports, you perform well, you get in, you use high school sports for the for the low scholarship. Socio- yeah, for the scholarship for low so- socioeconomic uh, cultures and areas. They use that to get a good college degree and then move forward. In Australia, we don't have that. We we go straight out of high school into university. Then there's no real sports structure except if you make a team for NF- for AFL, yep. NRL, cricket. You know, you make a state team, you yep. move on. So for athletics, that's a big problem for us. Yeah, there's world juniors, but there's, there's not a real financial carrot for them where they can say, you know, I can make it. For instance, in our team now for Australia, we have a young 17-year-old girl that won all schools in the Australian team. Yep. She wouldn't have that opportunity for a normal world champs, Commonwealth, Olympic team, unless she runs the qualifiers like an open senior athlete who's 25 years of age. Nitra has that opportunity because holistically we looked at what she brings. Yep. She's young, she's she's performing well, and she there's a young sixteen year old girl that will watch that on TV 
when the when the show is on or on live and go, hey, she's that could be me. Like, yep, I can actually run. Like that's an opportunity for me. She could do it. I can do it. That's what we need. You know that that's why our top young athletes in golf, football, anything in the world, Nike or Adidas, and they jump on them quickly because they know that most young kids want to buy that shoe to be like them. Yep. You know, so that was where we feel Nitro has that opportunity, and and it is it is that gap filler for us for our test match style forms of the game, yep. which is our Olympics, Commonwealth, national tr- titles. And it'll be great experience for those young up and coming athletes to be able to, you know, uh, exceed at, under pressure, crowds, the eyes of, you know, the eyes of the nation Definitely. with TV and, and a big crowd without having to go to, you know, the Rio for their first big meet Definitely. and have those nerves over, be overwhelming. And that's, where, and that's where, where we struggle. We do struggle at our top international level nationally for Australian teams and uh, you know that's something we're working on in Australia to, to to rectify that and and you're quite right the pressures of 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 elite sport uh, are becoming more and more um, prevalent within our com- within forms of communication on the internet or in the paper or in movies where where people now realizing that to be an elite athlete is not as glorified and is, is not as easy as what it looks there's a yep. lot of emotional pressure that comes along with it so the older, the younger you can teach these kids to be able to handle these things, the better. Yep. Wanted to get uh, get into Usain Bolt is going to be the coming out. The big guy. <laughs> He's a good mate of yours. Um, what's he feel about the about the format? Is he looking forward yeah. to coming down to Australia? No, he, funny enough, I spoke to him this morning driving here, so he, he, we we talk quite a bit, and we never we never really mix business or or athletics. We normally try and keep it quite light because we we. we he participates still in the sport, and I did it for so long. There's so much more things we try and talk about. Yep. But it's funny today. I said to him, "How's training going? You training well?" He's just gotten back to training, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, I'm training good." I said, "No, the, no, the funny thing is, I said this competition is actually really cool. It, it might not be all be about you when you come out here, you know." And he said, "Shut up, John. It's always about me." <laughs> <laughs> so it was a funny moment. So you know, the guy is a legend. What he's created, um, you know, individually as an athlete with nine Olympic gold medals is it's is so crazy. Like it's such a hard thing to believe. Like for me, even I'm his friend, and and I always call him a gift from God because it's just I've run and I've won one Olympic medal, and that was in a four by four with a team of guys. Yeah, and you know I I, I tried so hard many a years to win an individual Olympic medal, and this guy in three separate Olympics has won three gold medals and been able to rally a team together. Mind you, each of those athletes in his four by one team were great athletes in their own right, but still to you know, you play. He played a big role in in captaining and and motivating yeah. on that team, and to have four guys be on the same page for three separate Olympics to win that, and then break world records in the, it's just crazy. Like when you yeah. talk about it, it's hard to fathom it. So I, expect- I mean, I think I read you. You know, you're calling the Bradman of your sport, and he is. He's that far in front and in above everybody else. It's it's day and night, and I always say to people, if I could say or. If I can take you back, hop in the DeLorean, me, Michael J. Fox, and Doc, and say, let's go watch Babe Ruth play. Yep. Or let's go watch Don Bradman play. Or let's go watch Bo Jackson or OJ yep. Simpson. Or, or early, early, late 80s Michael Jordan. You know. oh, man, I, I, or, or Larry Bird. Or, yeah. I mean, you just, you, you, you say, yeah, when, mm. how? Yeah. We have this opportunity in Australia. First time he's running in Australia, we have this opportunity. Uh, for people here living here to come and watch this, yep. we have this opportunity um, where we see Olympic Games to watch this guy. Like so for some of us, any time you can come out and live, live and see this guy, um, do it. Yeah, you, I mean it you, is. You're you not going to. Gonna, you're going to tell your kids, and your kids are going to tell their kids about this guy. Yeah, it, that's, exactly. That's wild. You know that that's crazy. We're alive for this. Uh, it, it, like, no, it is. It is. You're running I, out of words. Yeah, and John doesn't normally run out of words. I can't explain it. So, and I thought for me, Carl Lewis is is one of the greatest of all times. And, yeah. I, and I sit you saying and Carl very close together. And I give you saying after this Olympics the, the top spot. Um, and even Carl in medals is is a distant second. Yep. To to you saying, you know, but 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 what Carl did for the sport is, I mean, like, for a long time he was the man. So one of the things that we've seen has been a, as as the Big Bash and T20 has grown worldwide, is we've been able to extend the careers of great cricketers like Kevin Peterson, Brendan McCullum, all these guys. Brad Hodge still playing. What is he? Forty seven now. Forty eight. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> um, brilliant. 
is there a chance that you know guys like Definitely. you saying they just love this format and go oh, it's a team format I've just great got to question. do my piece great question Sean and and, and and I think you can see it I think you understand it you, you gave me a great lead question that's what makes him good guys that's why you listen that's why you pay attention so no 100% that's exactly that's because it takes the pressure off the individual yep. you know athletics can can sometimes too subjective where we don't rate an athlete unless they do what Usain does. Yep. We don't pay attention to other seven lanes. Because yep. as Usain, and there's, oh, who came second? Mm. Or who was that guy seventh? But that guy that made the final is an unbelievable athlete. Yeah. Put him in One most the- sports, he's in the top percentile. Top eight <laughs> yeah. people and fastest people in the world. Like, well, you know, well, you put him in an SA with American uh, I put football. him as a wide receiver and no one catches him. No chance. Yeah. No chance. So you know, it's 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 no, I'm not, and I'm not disrespecting the skill of each of these sports. We're talking about as far as being able to be in that top percentile, correct? Yeah, and the and what it takes to get there for every four years, mind you. Yeah. So um, so you know, when when you see when you see that, it allows people to like, and it's a great it's a, it's a great foresight you have. Because that is needed for our sport as well as the youth. Yep. It's needed that we respect the people that have paved the way as well, that they're not put out to pasture as soon as they don't win the Melbourne Cup or the Kentucky Derby. Yep. You understand? Oh, completely. So they still they still get to compete and be appreciated for their skills and their talents, which a lot of these athletes do have in track and field. And that's the thing, the the, the format, the way that the you're trying to... The format allows that. The format allows it, and also it allows it to go, here's our Australian series, here's our US series, and that's here's our European doing. series. And, so that's and, why it was great having Seb interested. You yep. know, that's why it's great that he that he's endorsing that he's saying, "Hey, this is this is this is interesting. I like this. Let's see how it goes." You know, so that's what we want to achieve. We want this to. I mean, I mean, the long, long term goal is to have this in all the schools. Yep. Where this is their athletic format that they use. You know, moving forward. For 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 even our little athletics, there's there's a nitro competition with that, within the little athletics. Yep. You know, and there's a nitro competition within our states, and it just it allows us again to take pressure off our our test match series format of 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 athletics. You know. So where can uh, where can people get tickets? Where should they be? Oh, oh. Another great question. See you guys. <laughs> Sean's on fire today. So, no, you can go to Ticketmaster uh, to get your tickets. They're reasonably priced from $20 up to $85 for a grandstand seat. You've got to be very, very quick because we're all pretty much almost sold out on our on our last night, half sold out on our, on our first night, and, and the same for our Thursday night. So um, By the time this is yeah. published, this could be sold out. So yes. I'll will, I will send out some send out some tweets. So February 4th, 9th, and 11th, and at Lakeside Stadium in Melbourne, Victoria. So um, And if you can't make it, it'll be on Channel, Channel 7. Channel 7 live around Australia, except for Melbourne, where it'll be on a delayed uh, telecast after women's football, which is exciting. And... Uh, um, as of as we speak, we're finding out on our international broadcast where it'll be televised um, around the world, which is really exciting. So um, we, we're we're just trying to tick all boxes. We know there's a lot of loyal track fans out there. There's a lot of people that love track, but just don't have the track and field hasn't given them the access to love track again. So yep. um, we're trying to provide that, and um, God has extremely blessed us to be in this position now where we are at, and we're just hoping to continue this path and um, and to change the game, man. That's- Terrific. I've got five questions to close this interview off. I know you've got to get to a meeting to do some more nitro work. Hit me. Do you remember the first sports event you ever attended? First sports event I ever attended. First... Can I can I can I tell you the first sports event I attended that changed my life? That's even a better that's even a better one. Okay, first sports event that that I attended that changed my life would be um, I, I I did boxing from when I was eleven to I was nineteen. I only started running when I was twenty twenty one. Yep. And um, I the Sydney Olympics was on in Sydney, and um, my father bought tickets to all the boxing quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. Yep. And and I went and one on one of the nights Danny Green fought Alexander Lebziak from Russia, who was the one of the best. If you look him up, he's one of the best uh, amateur boxers that existed in that weight class. And um, I remember sitting and the parochialism and the and, and the patriotism of, of the Australian crowd when Danny was fighting yep. gave me shivers. And I didn't end up watching the fight. I ended up watching the crowd. Yep. And I said to myself sitting there that one day I'm going to represent my country and have my people screaming for me like this. Yep. And that was the moment where I wanted to become a champion in sports. I just wanted that adulation in that moment. I wanted that 
exact moment. And I never thought I'd get it until Commonwealth Games in Melbourne when I was able to win yep. in front of 90,000 people where I got that moment. And it kind of sucked because once I reached that goal, I became a bit laxed and it was, it was hard to find the next carrot or the next goal that, that, that I wanted for my own vocation. Yep. So, yeah, that was, that was a moment, um, a sporting moment for me, which, 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 which where I decided, you know what, this is, I need this in my life. Terrific. I, have a sim- I was at uh, the Sydney Olympics, same Australia versus Russia, but it was uh, Andrew Gaze and the Boomers beating the Russians for the first time yeah. in Olympic competition. Yeah. And yeah, the hairs on the back of the neck. I remember hugging Peter Brock and yeah. jumping up and down. It was the, the, the best. Um, normally I'm asking sports executives about what their favorite food they eat at a sports event. But you're an athlete. You're, do you no, have a space? Shoot when, me you that go, when you go to a game, what's your favorite food? Hot chips. Hot chips? Easy one, yeah. In the morning, you pick up your phone. What's the first app you open? In the morning, pick up my phone. First app that I'd open would be... Well, you, you know, you can't you can't ask me that question, Sean, because uh, what happens is if you have an iPhone is it alerts you on who has hit you up. So, right? is, okay, so the yep. first one that I go to, depending on what, what I'm doing. So right now for Nitro, the first one to open up is my my email. Email. Yep. That's my first one. If Nitro doesn't exist, it's Instagram. Okay, Instagram. Because <laughs> this one with a light entertainment before I get exactly, up. Exactly, exactly. Just take in the pictures. So you I don't just, need I to just, take it too yeah, much. I don't want to talk to no one. I just want to take in some pictures, see what the world's doing. Well, that, uh, that might actually answer. What is your uh, MVP social media platform? Is it Instagram? Yeah, FB Insta. Yep. And if there is someone that uh, you think the Sports Geek Podcast listeners should be following, whether it be on, on the Insta or on Twitter or online somewhere, who, who would you say they should be following? Man, that's, that's, a, that's a real tough one. But I'm, I'm a massive fan of, uh, at the moment, I like the fire brands because not that I was one in my career. But uh, I, I, like, I, I like Odell Beckham Jr. at the moment. I, yep. really, I I know people give him a lot of flack, and he's he can be a little bit precious at times. But I um I, I think he's being himself. I'm I'm loving I'm loving people that that are are true to who they are as people for right, wrong, or indifferent. And um you know I, I definitely I, I follow him, and I don't follow too many people, but he's one guy which I think right now I just every time I I look at a post from him. It, it either spins me out, weirds me out, or makes me laugh. So he's a unique individual. Yeah, he but he owns it. But he owns it. And that's the and thing. He owns it. You know, and I, and I, and I like that. So um, and I, I'd obviously say you saying Bolt as well because um, especially Snapchat is just hilarious, man. And uh, I, that's I, I don't I don't do Snapchat, but I definitely have it just to follow him to see what he does each night. Because he, he is when, his own reality show, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. So it's just you know like I can follow him, but I know exactly where because we do a lot of things. I know exactly what's happening at what stage so um yeah the big man is he's a funny guy so yeah that's probably 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 well thank you very much for coming on the show look forward to nitro and uh we'll see you in uh, february thank you sean you're doing a great job and uh we appreciate all your support and I wish you all the best too and we see you at nitro come feb 4th cheers sign up for sports geek news at sportsgeekhq.com slash sign up now Thanks again to John Stephenson. Uh, yeah, absolutely terrific interview. For so, you know, I not normally I don't normally interview someone uh, cold as I did John. Uh, I normally know them, or I uh, or they know of me. Um, but uh, as you could hear from the interview, and I'm sure James had his work cut out in uh, leveling some of the volume that uh, John brought to the to to the uh, to the podcast but uh yeah he's absolute character and he's the right guy to be promoting uh to be promoting the series also a big thanks to to another another olympian uh dave colbert from jump media to help set up the interview and also nick holland from uh athletics australia for helping tee that up uh all i wish you all the success for nitro i think it uh it will be something that uh, catches the imagination of the Australian public and has massive potential to uh, to go global, as as John said. It's really that's the formula. Uh, we've seen the success of T20 around the world from a cricket point of view. Um, we can only hope that uh, a format like Nitro is something that keeps uh, the great Usain Bolt uh, running around a track. Which leads me to a question of the podcast: Is there name one athlete you would like to see in your life live? And um, yeah, it is terribly appealing uh, to see Usain Bolt run. Um, you know, as John said, remarkable athlete. Uh, 
uh, three Olympics and, and gold medals every time he lines up. Um, it will be pretty special if I uh, quote uh, famed Australian commentator Bruce McAvaney. It will be very special to see Usain Bolt in, in action. But I would love to know, who do you want to see live? Send me, send me a tweet at Sean Callanan. Or uh, tag me on a uh, on a post in the Sports Biz Slack community. Um, I'd love to hear about it. I've got one more, one other question. I've got: Are you going to South by Southwest? I am going to South by Southwest this year. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm really looking forward to it because one of the people that I know that are already going, the conversations that are already happening. We've already set up a South by Southwest channel in the Sports Biz Slack. Um, so I'm looking forward to catching up with. With people for the first time, like uh, Makers of Sport host uh, Adam Martin will be there, and uh, and many more um, that are that are very active in the sports biz Slack, and people that I know. I'm looking forward to catching up with good friend Dwayne Hankins, is it, and uh, TJ Ansley, who are at the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, Lenny Go from Tradable Bits will be there. There's a whole bunch of people. Um, we most likely uh, will be doing a live podcast and a recording uh, from some. Uh, barbecue joint in in Austin Um, so if you are going uh, please let me know Uh, please join up we're definitely having a a meetup of sorts um, of all the people that are in the sports biz slack and people who listen to the podcast so please reach out make sure you know tell us that you're coming Um, I would love to meet you all Um, I will bring I will bring swag uh, to, to hand out, uh, there will be, will not be a, a lack of sports geek uh, stickers and, and t-shirts. Um, I will bring them uh, bring them along. But love to meet you all. So if you're going to South by Southwest in the sports um, sector, uh, there's you know some people that I know. Rich Clark, another former guest, he'll be speaking. He'll be there, um, and a few others. So please let me know. Love to love to catch up. Until next episode, my name is Sean Callanan, and you've been listening to the Sports Geek. Podcast. Like the Sports Geek Podcast? Find us on Facebook.com slash Sports Geek. Check out which teams work with Sports Geek at SportsGeekHQ.com slash clients. Please leave a review on iTunes. Go to SportsGeekHQ.com slash iTunes. Thanks for listening to the Sports Geek Podcast.